Hi, sixth grade. Today we're going to work on the relative humidity review. So this is very similar to the intro worksheet that you completed yesterday. So we're just going to go over some calculations, how to complete them. Um, there's some questions at the bottom we're going to go over. And there's some charts from the back. We're going to end with measuring the relative humidity of the air again, just like we did yesterday. So number one asks you, how much water can zero degrees Celsius air hold? So we can use this graph. So the x-axis shows temperature, and it's asking about zero degrees. So zero degrees is right here, and you bring the temperature up, you make it hit that line, because this is a line that shows the relationship between temperature and the amount of water vapor that that temperature air can hold. So we bring the zero up, we make it hit the line, we bring it over to the y-axis, all right? And then it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect in the middle or on one of these lines, so we have to estimate. So right in the middle would be 5, because right here would be 0, and this line is 10. So I'm going to estimate that that's 4. So at 0 degrees Celsius, that temperature air can hold 4 grams of water vapor. So number two, suppose this temperature air is holding two grams. So remember the formula. The formula is part over the whole times 100. So that part is the amount of water that that air is actually holding. So there's two grams of water vapor in the air. But at this temperature, zero degrees, it can hold a total of four grams. Okay, so two divided by four times 100 to turn that number into a percent, we get 50% relative humidity. All right, so number three, if the air temperature is 40 degrees Celsius and there are 45 grams of water vapor in the air, what is the relative humidity? So again, we go over to this graph. We look at the 40. 40 comes up, and it's at the very top of that line that the graph shows. You bring it over, and again, we have to estimate. So I'm going to estimate that this is 48. All right, so 45 would be in the middle, and this line looks like it's between the 45 and the 50. So I'm just going to estimate. I'm going to say it's 40. At this temperature, 40 degrees Celsius, the air can hold 30, or sorry, 48. So if there is 45 grams of water vapor in the air, but at this temperature, that air can hold 48 grams. Now calculate the relative humidity. So 45 divided by 48 times 100. And we do get a decimal point. You can go ahead and round to the whole number. That make everything easier. So it really is 93.75 if you can see that. So we can round that to 94. So that's pretty high. All right, and finally, number four, if the air temperature is 35 degrees Celsius and there are 12 grams of water vapor in the air, so we know that's our top number. And if 35 degrees Celsius, this number is 30. 35 is between the, the 30 and the 40, so 35 comes up. Okay, and we bring it over. It looks like it's a little bit more than halfway, so I'm going to say 36. 36 grams it can hold at that temperature. So 12 divided by 36 times 100. And again, we get a decimal. Okay, so I'm going to round that down to the whole number to 33. 33%. All right. So number five, what does the relative humidity of 75% mean? mean? So that means that whatever amount of water vapor that temperature air can hold, it's holding 75% of the total. So if that air can hold 100 grams of water vapor, 75% relative humidity means it's only holding 75 grams worth. So the air is holding 75% of the total water vapor that it can hold. And then number six, observe the graph. What is the relationship between temperature and the amount of water uh, vapor that temperature air can hold? So if you look at this graph, 
it's going up. Both variables are increasing. So as temperature increases, the amount of water vapor that air can hold also increases. Because when that air is warmed, the particles spread out, there's more space between them, so it can hold more water vapor. And so it does, and it can. So as temperature increases, the amount of water vapor it can hold also increases. So now let's look at number seven. So number seven, we're gonna do this chart together. And number eight, I want you to do number eight on your own. Okay, so number one, we're using the chart for the relative humidity. All right, so number one, if the dry bulb temperature is 26 and the wet bulb is 16, make sure, remember, we first subtract. And the dry bulb is almost always higher than this wet bulb temperature. Because remember, we're making that thermometer wet and we're fanning it and the water is evaporating and it's cooling that thermometer. So the wet bulb will almost always be lower than the dry bulb. So we just simply subtract 26 minus 16. That's a difference of 10, right? So we take a look at this chart. Dry bulb is 26 right there. Wet bulb depression, that means that difference, the difference between those two bulbs. So the difference is 10. So we bring 10 down, we bring 26 across, and the relative humidity, according to the chart, is 34%. All right, let's do number two. Now, number two tells us the dry bulb, and it tells us the depression, the difference, but we have to figure out the wet bulb. But we know if the dry bulb is 22, and there's a difference of four between these two temperatures, we know this wet bulb has to be 18 because 22 minus 18 equals four. Okay, so whatever this number is, you subtract. And so dry bulb temperature, 22. The difference is four. 22 comes across, four comes down and the relative humidity is 68%. So using the information that the chart gives you, you just work backwards to figure out what you need to find. All right, so number three, it tells us the wet bulb depression now, the difference, but it tells us the wet bulb. So think about how you would find the dry bulb. So remember the dry, this number is almost always, just think about it always being higher than this number. So if there's a difference of two, and whatever this number is, had to be this number minus two equals 38, okay, we know that the dry bulb had to be 40, because 40 minus 38 equals two. So we take the dry bulb, 40 towards the bottom, difference of two, we bring it down, bring it across, relative humidity of 88 percent. All right, let's do number four. So now it tells us the relative humidity. So we're really working backwards with this one. This one they're telling us the relative humidity is 88 percent, but there's a difference of one. Okay, so we know in this chart at the very top these are the difference numbers. This depression, that means the difference between those two bulbs. And it says there's a difference of one. Okay, so we look in that column for a difference of one. And we find that relative humidity number. And it tells us it's 88. So a difference of one. And we come down until we find that 88 number. And there it is. See, it's between 87 and 89. So 88, we bring it back, the dry bulb had to be 10. Okay, so we look in this column, we know it's a difference of one. And they told us the relative humidity is 88%. So we bring it back, the dry bulb has to be 10. So the dry bulb is 10, we know there's a difference of one. Okay, so this number minus one has to be nine. 10 minus nine equals one. And now we have all the information. And the number five is just like number one and the ones we did yesterday. So 16 minus 10 is six. Dry bulb temperature, 16. Over here so you can see it. Dry bulb, 16. Difference is six, so six comes down. 
16 comes across, and that's a relative humidity of 45%. Right? So chart 8 is just like chart 7, except you're going to do it on your own, and you know how to do that now. Okay, stay tuned for the rest of my video. I'm going to walk you through uh, the building of the psychrometer and measuring the relative humidity of the air outside. Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Roper. So I'm here on my porch me measuring the relative humidity of the outside air. So remember I measured relative humidity inside my house yesterday and that wasn't totally accurate because I wasn't outside. So I'm on my porch. I made, I made my homemade psychrometer. So here's my dry bulb, okay, just a regular thermometer. And then my wet bulb has a cheesecloth around the bulb and I dropped a few drops of water on there. And I've been fanning it for a couple minutes. All right, so they're probably ready. I'm gonna read the information and you're going to wanna record this information onto your chart on the back bottom of your relative humidity review worksheet. Right, so if you can see, I'll bring this up. So this is the dry bulb. I'm going to say it's probably about 16, 16 degrees Celsius. You see that line between the 10 and the 20, that's 15. So I'm going to very quickly write on my worksheet, 16 degrees. And I'll show you the worksheet in just a moment because once I stop fanning, the temperature of the wet bulb will start increasing again. So you have to be kind of quick about it. It's a little windy today. So right there you see the wet bulb, it's between 10 and 20 and it's below that middle, that 15 mark. So I'm going to say that's 12, All right? So I can stop fanning now. My wet bulb is 12 degrees. So my dry was 16, my wet is 12. That's a difference of four degrees Celsius. All right, so I'm gonna take a look at my chart. So 16 was my dry, okay, 16, a difference of four. So 16 comes across, four comes down, and I have a relative humidity of 62%. 62%. So for the location, this is outside. Um, and we can put the date, so 511. The time is 313 p.m. All right. And if you can stick around, I can show you the actual. So my measure is 62%. We can see how close we got to what it actually is. All right. So this was as of... 2 p.m. I can update this. We can see what it actually is, just like yesterday. But yesterday kind of didn't count because I was outside. And well, I was inside. I'm outside today. So the relative humidity is 38%. So kind of way off there. Um, but sometimes you get really close to what it actually is. And we can even do something called percent error, where we calculate how far off from what the actual we should have gotten, right? But I did get 62%, and that's way higher than what it actually is. So I probably would want to, if I had time, do that again um, to see how much closer I could get. So hopefully this was a good review about relative humidity, and I'll see you next time.